Aloha beautiful souls. Now in this pick a card tarot reading, we are going to be channeling your higher self and sharing what you need to know now, courtesy of your higher self. <laughs> so take a look at these piles here. I paired a color with a crystal and in this first box here, this first color, we have Unikite with the yellow. And with this lavender color, we have amethyst. And with this maroon color, we have moonstone. So the messages in this reading are intended to be insightful. They're intended to be healing and soothing, reassuring and inspiring. So go ahead and take a moment to close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and ask your higher self to share what you need to know now. And when you are ready, open your eyes and see which pile, which pair really speaks to you and resonates with you the most. You can find your reading in the timestamps below. I'll see you there. Hey there, Star Fam. Welcome to another reading here at Transform with Ryan. And today we are asking your higher self to share with you what you need to know now. And for those of you that were drawn to this Unikite crystal with this yellow color here. Let's get into your reading. So we're going to start off with getting some basic energy cards here, okay? Just to kind of get a feel on an energetic level, what it is your higher self needs you to know right now, all right? And then we'll use the tarot to get a little bit more detail on this message. So first out, you have anxiety. Healer of the ages. And financial constraints. Okay, so let's actually rearrange this. We'll put this right over here instead. So we have enough room for your energy cards up here at the top next to the crystals and candles. And already I'm getting that this message is definitely related to finances okay and i mean honestly in the past few years so okay well <laughs> we will take this as well i didn't intend for this other card to come out so you got all tied up okay and of course i feel like that is definitely strongly related to um, financial constraints here and so as i was saying you know so many people have been struggling with money problems in the last couple of years, especially with all the lockdown, the pandemic, people losing their jobs and with the economy and the stock market doing all sorts of crazy things. A lot of people are feeling this burden of financial constraints, OK, and feeling really stuck feeling um, trapped because of finances, right? Not being able to make choices that help you feeling liberated, feeling abundant, um, not really even having that opportunity to just relax and enjoy life because we're in, so many people are in this constant struggle of making sure that bills are getting taken care of, um, food is available, those types of things, all right? And what your higher self wants you to know is really this problem is not going to last very long. That what I'm hearing from spirit is not only for you, but just the world as a whole, the financial situation is going to be healed. It's going to improve. And what I'm hearing particularly for all of you that were drawn to this card is you need to really examine your relationship with money. Okay, so what do I mean with that? This is a very big task for um, a lot of you. And trust me, I empathize because I go through this um, journey myself with my relationship to money, right? And so I would start by encouraging you to really understand what money means to you. 
okay? So does money feel like something that doesn't grow on trees? Does money feel like something that's really hard to come by? Does money feel like something where there, you never have enough of it? Or does money feel like really easy to come by? Does money feel abundant to you? Does money bring freedom to you? Do you love money? Do you love having money? Like what is your exact relationship with money, okay? And with, you know, law of attraction and spirituality, which is kind of my forte here, you attract what you are, not what you want, okay? I'm saying that again. You attract what you are, not what you want. So yes, you may want more money, but if you feel, for example, like money is hard to come by, money is scarce, you're not going to attract abundance of money. You're going to attract a scarcity of money, okay? Or you're going to attract like just enough to get by. All right, if that's how you truly feel about money. So a lot of people on the world today, what they're being called to do by their higher selves, by their guides, is to heal their relationship with money. All right, maybe some of you spend money like there's no tomorrow and there's this feeling of maybe undervaluing money. All right, and just like, okay, as soon as you make money, you spend it. Maybe some of you have that problem. Let me know if that's you in the comments down below. Be honest with yourself. That's the first step here in healing your relationship with money. And why is this so important? It's because so many people, they want abundance in their life. They don't want to have to worry about money. And so this is the first step to get there. All right. Okay. Let's get some tarot cards here to give a little bit further guidance. So I'm hearing right now, um, also, I just took a glance at this all tied up energy card here for you all. And what this card also wanted to pass on is that um, not only do you have to release these limiting beliefs and these restrictions that you have surrounding money so that you can have this freedom and be free from the chains of money and scarcity, but that with the plants around here, how you handle your money over the next, you know, couple months, whenever you're viewing this reading, that's going to dictate the type of harvest you have in the future. Okay, so being mindful of where you invest your money, how much of your money you save, how much of your money you spend and what you spend your money on, like understanding that and laying down um, the seeds that will bear fruit that are going to have value over time and ideally increasing value over time is really going to set the tone for you and your wealth and abundance moving forward. All right. And I don't normally feel called to do this, but I saw this on the bottom of the deck and I feel like this is important for you to know. So you have the Six of Cups here and the Unikite Crystal is actually really good at tapping into past energies, even from past lives. And so getting to the root here of your money beliefs is what's going to help your money tree, if you will, grow and flourish. It's going to dictate to what extent it will grow and flourish. So now is the time for you to really think about money and your relationship with money, what you believe about money, how easy or hard it is to get money, and also how much you're worth. Okay? How do you view your self-worth here? Do you feel like the world needs to um, give you more money? Do you feel like you deserve to get paid more for what you do? Um, have a more equal energetic exchange? Okay, because that's what money is. It's really an energetic exchange. What else do we have for you? We have the Five of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the moon. Okay, yes. So really what I'm hearing is that so many people have this illusion about what money is. Okay, for a lot of people, they really desire money. But they're also maybe they they associate money with greed. Okay, and abuse of power. 
maybe that's what some people do. I know that's how I felt about it because I used to watch a lot of movies when I was younger where there were like, um, like it was those cop shows or something like that. Um, and there were these dirty cops who would, you know, um, steal money or take money from people that they bust and crime rings and whatever in very like shady ways, you know? And so the notion of money didn't feel very pure to me anymore on that subconscious level. Money became associated with shady, dirty deeds to me. And that wasn't in resonance with me. Like, I didn't want to be a shady, dirty, no good, cheating, lying person, right? And so my relationship with money was damaged in that way because that's my association with money. So really breaking down these illusions that you have around money and whatever moral concept you give to money is going to be part of this healing process with your finances, okay? And here, um, this, this notion is supported by the Five of Swords, okay? So there's this conflict in your thoughts. Um, like on one level, you want money. On another level, you have this negative association with money. So why would you want to be associated with something negative? Does that make sense? So reflect on that. Think on that. I would encourage you to write it down just so you can see it firsthand. And don't think too hard about it. Just like free script, free write, and then look at it, analyze it later. And then when you're ready, release it. And with this Ace of Cups here, what you're going to really need to focus on um, after these ideas is your emotions. That's where the money is at. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, but that's where the money is at. Um, but that's where the growth really is going to have exponential gains is the emotions you feel around money. If someone says money to you and you feel anxious, then that's not a very strong vibration to attract an abundance of money, okay? If someone says money and you feel fearful, then definitely you're not going to attract a lot of wealth and abundance in your life. But if you feel expansive, if you feel good, you feel peaceful and blissful when people talk about money and you think about money, then that is a excellent vibration for you to be attracting more wealth into your life. All right, my loves. Wow, this is a very powerful message from your higher self. And like, you know, this journey with money and, and value and self-worth and stuff is like insane. It's so powerful. It's so transformative. Um, so I feel like these cards here wanted to come out and provide you with your final message. I was only thinking about pulling one, but you know, spirit and your higher self have other plans and we're just going to go with that flow. So intuition, trust your intuition. It has been guiding you to the answers that you seek. All right. This, this right here is a very intuitive process, especially when it comes to where you put your money and, and how you make your money work for you. Truth, see your light, know your power, have the courage to walk your truth. There you go. Find that um, inner truth within you about your worth, your, your value, and um, what money can do for you in that regard. Choice. By staying conscious in your thoughts, you guide your journey in the right in the direction of choice. There you go. So if you keep thinking to yourself, money doesn't grow on trees, money is hard to come by, money is the devil, mo money, mo problems, whatever, then you're choosing that reality. All right, my loves. Oh my God, such powerful, powerful messages from your higher self today. I'm in love with it. I hope you are as well. So that was your reading. Thank you so much for tuning into your reading today, Star Fam. Make sure to like and comment down below what you are calling in from your reading today so you can begin the manifestation pathway to make it a reality. And feel free to share this video with others and subscribe to this channel. Now, I'd like to extend a very special invitation for those of you that are looking to align with your purpose and learn how to achieve your goals. In the description box down below, you will see a link to book an energy alignment session with me where we will together create that roadmap for success. Create that roadmap for you to align with your purpose and achieve your goals. So I look forward to connecting with you and until next time, sending you all so much love and cosmic hugs. Bye. 
Hey there, Star Fam. Welcome back to another reading here at Transform with Ryan. <laughs> and today we are channeling some messages from your higher self and allowing your higher self to share what you need to know now. So for those of you that were drawn to this lavender color card with this appropriately lavender colored crystal amethyst, this is going to be your reading. All right. So let's take a look here with your energy cards first okay so let's allow spirit to sort of communicate with you in a very general and broad sense with the energy of the message and then we'll use the tarot to get a little bit more detailed information here for you okay so You have adjacent possibilities, patience, and door to romance. Oh, so definitely for those of you that were drawn to this lavender card, your higher self really wants to speak with you on the topic of love right now. Okay, so what I'm hearing from spirit for some of you is that you have been desiring love you have been wanting to attract your soulmate, your twin flame your life partner your future spouse whichever term you use you've been wanting to attract that individual for quite some time and you've really had to be patient as you um, wait for this person to show up in your life and what I'm hearing from your higher self is um, it sounds like in this particular instance, for those of you drawn to this card and this particular reading, you're ready for this connection, but your perfect ideal partner is not. Okay, so you have to have patience and wait a little bit longer for them. And the reason why I say this is because so many people, they focus a lot on manifesting their dream partner. And the focus is really on their perspective, right? Is that make sense? Uh, maybe you resonate with that and you have had that experience too. But the other thing you need to realize is that for this connection to happen, your dream partner is also needing to desire to manifest you as well, okay? So then when your two frequencies and energies match up, then you will come into union in physical dimension, all right? So your partner has to be just as ready as you are to enter into this relationship. And what I'm hearing is at this moment in time, your ideal partner, your future spouse, your twin flame soulmate is kind of going through some things right now okay and that they're trying to take care of this and handle these really urgent matters that are taking really most of their time and energy at this moment okay so they're asking um, for your understanding to just be a little bit more patient because with this adjacent possibilities again they're having to make some choices here on where they're going to allocate their time their money, their attention, their efforts, because there are some other things that need more attention right now. Like maybe they are going through um, something major with their health and their focus needs to be on healing. Maybe they're going through some financial issues and their focus needs to be on improving their financial stability, all right? Maybe they could even be in some sort of relationship, like a soul contract karmic relationship that they need to heal and resolve to release that energy so that when they come into union with you, there's no restrictions or barriers, right? So those are just some possibilities and take whatever resonates with you on an energetic level and leave the rest but those are some important things that your higher self wanted you to know that it's not that you're never going to find romance or you're never going to find the love of your life you will it's just a matter of divine timing for the both of you to come into union okay so let's get some tarot cards to get some more details about this situation here that your higher self is speaking of when it comes to love and romance now, if that's really kind of not something in resonance with you, then by all means, feel free to choose one of the other um, piles and one of the other cards, okay? 
uh, well, color cards, I should say, with crystals <laughs> specifically. Um, so four cards jumped out. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and see what they are. The Hermit. Son of Pentacles. The Chariot. And the Seven of Coins. Okay, well, beautiful. So, so the tarot is really confirming what we discussed earlier. So the hermit is really representative of alone time. Now, the hermit, what a lot of people need to understand is that the hermit, even though the hermit is alone, they're not lonely. Okay, so this is your opportunity, your higher self says, is to be comfortable with being by yourself. How can you feel fulfilled and have joy in your life and excitement and love and laughter in your life now without being in a relationship, okay? So yes, um, a relationship is a way to experience romantic love, right, with another person, but there's other forms of love. There's familial love, friendship love, um, platonic love, humanitarian love, um, and the other thing that I'm getting to is really self-love is a big thing for you is are there any parts of yourself that you are shaming that you are guilting that you feel are like ugly so this is an opportunity too for you to learn how to love yourself okay and enhance that love because when you love yourself it's going to be easier for other people to love you as well um and you know i'm hearing too that many of you are on this very internal transformative journey okay like maybe figuring out where you want to go in life what your purpose is what your mission is i'm getting that uh, message here from the chariot card okay um and the chariot really speaks a lot to confidence as well so in what areas of your life do you need to build your confidence in um, build your self-worth as well and it could even be with receiving love maybe some of you have a little bit of insecurities about your looks about your lovability all right and when we talk about law of attraction and manifesting you attract what you are not what you want so if you have low self-esteem and you undervalue yourself and you don't love yourself you're going to attract the type of partners that share that same attitude towards you they undervalue you okay or they don't respect you or their attraction to you is very tenuous because maybe some days you feel beautiful or uh, amazing and handsome in a certain outfit that you wear but then you wear a different outfit and suddenly you feel so unattractive okay so unappealing and so if your energy is like that and you don't feel yourself worthy of receiving love and deserving of love it's going to be very hard for your ideal partner to come in okay now with the son of pentacles again that speaks to having some energy of patience and support okay see how what i'm seeing here with this antlers is like they're very small right now and they're not that full like beautiful branching antlers that older i think they're called bucks older bucks have that have really gone through the experience of life and growth and um, surviving things making it through things and evolving okay so you're at the beginning stages here on your journey and your partner also is perhaps going through some early stages in this chapter and this journey in their life and so really learn and gain the most that you can in this time frame with the seven of pentacles it's also encouraging that all right so it's like learning more about yourself discovering what works discovering what doesn't discovering what you'd like to keep with you because it's serving your highest and greatest good or what things do you need to let go of what beliefs do you need to let, let go of what habits do you need to let go of to help you uh, experience love maybe some of you are like runaway bride and when someone approaches you you like run away you break out of the relationship or maybe um you know some of you are not happy with your body and your weight fluctuates or something like that and you um don't really feel like you have the best physical health or the best and most healthy weight for you okay um, so working around these things too are ways that you can enhance that self-love and thus make it easier for your 
twin flame, your soulmate to find and connect with you. So let's get some messages here from your higher self to kind of close out this reading. So we have reflection. Oh, how perfect is this? See all aspects of yourself through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self. All right. So what I'm hearing from spirit in addition to this is be the person that you would want your high, your soulmate to fall in love with. Okay. So think about that type of person. What type of person does your soulmate, your twin flame, um, imagine to be their perfect partner and you need to be that person. Okay. Within means. Okay. I'm not, I don't want to get confused into thinking you have to change who you are at your very core or anything like that. But if you want, if you're higher, if you feel your soulmate and your, in your twin flame want someone who's confident, then you need to be confident. Okay. And so tune into that energy as well. Who do you want to be? And what kind of partner are you calling in by being that person? Okay. So I hope that helps give you some clarity on what you need to know right now and ways in which you can grow and evolve. And that was your reading, loves. Thank you so much for tuning into your reading today, Star Fam. Make sure to like and comment down below what you are calling in from your reading today so you can begin the manifestation pathway to make it a reality. And feel free to share this video with others and subscribe to this channel. Now, I'd like to extend a very special invitation for those of you that are looking to align with your purpose and learn how to achieve your goals. In the description box down below, you will see a link to book an energy alignment session with me where we will together create that roadmap for success, create that roadmap for you to align with your purpose and achieve your goals. So I look forward to connecting with you and until next time, sending you all so much love and cosmic hugs. Bye. Hey there, Star Fam. Welcome back to another reading here at Transform with Ryan. And today we are going to channel your higher self and allow them to share what you need to know right now. So those of you that were drawn to this pairing here with the maroon color and the moonstone, let's get into your reading. So first we're going to pull some energy cards to just sort of get the general... Um, message the general idea here on an energetic level from your higher self so that you can find out what you need to know now okay so let's see what we got for you loves so first you have door to spirit and next you have hostilities Okay, the message is already coming through very, very clear. And then it here it says strategy. And what's interesting is I'm called to point out to all of you journal hyphen log. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is spirit needs you to know that you need to heal a connection you currently have in your life. Okay, um, there's with this door to spirit, there's this um, energetic link between you and someone that you carry some hostile energies or feelings towards. So anger, resentment, um, guilt, shame, um, jealousy, even. Okay. Um, I'm really, really feeling anger. So there's let me explain a little bit about energy cords for you. So when you meet someone and you feel very strong emotions with them or you have emotions that have greater depth and meaning over time, there's this energetic cord that links the two of you. Now, that energetic cord um, can be very nourishing and very helpful, right? Um, think about like your best friend or your favorite family member or a mentor who has really helped guided you through a very difficult chapter in your life, right? So some of those cords and those energetic connections are very nourishing and helpful. But then there are other cords like 
you know, if you think of TV shows and cartoons and stuff, comics where you have an arch nemesis or you have someone that um, really wronged you or bullied you in the past or betrayed you, you have an energetic cord with that person as well because of that strong emotional connection that was made. And that connection doesn't serve you because as long as you think think negative thoughts, have negative feelings towards that person, then that type of energy and frequency is going to exist within you. And when we talk about creating your dream life and attracting the things you want into your life, you have to be that vibrational match and frequency with it. Okay, so if you're looking for love and acceptance and peace and harmony, yet you bear some anger and resentment towards somebody in your life, whether they're still in your life or they were somebody um, from your recent past, like an old coworker, for example, or an ex-friend, you know, something like ex-lover, whatever, right? Then that is going to disrupt your vibrational frequency from matching with the thing that you do desire. So this is about letting that energy go, okay? Um, connecting with their higher self and healing that, offering forgiveness, offering grace, truly from the heart. Now, if you're not ready for it, that's fine. But in order to really get what you want in life, this is a process that has to happen, okay? To make it a lot easier for you to attract those things into your life and make it faster for you to do so. Um, what I'm getting to is to share with some of you this um, Hawaiian meditation, this Hawaiian prayer. I mean, it's so funny because when I lived in Hawaii, I was like a, a child. I was born there, so I was very young and I didn't know about this. And it wasn't until I, you know, lived in the mainland here that I heard of this. And it's so beautiful. It's the Ho'oponopono prayer. Okay. And it's very, very simple as far as the phrase and the prayers go. But as far as the the energetic part, that's where the real magic is. So the, the phrases are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. Okay, so there are opportunities as well online to learn more about Ho'oponopono if you um, really even want to go deeper on it and share it with others, like you can take some classes on it, of course. But that's the basic idea of the Ho'oponopono prayer. And those are really, really powerful words. And I'm sure if you say them out loud, you can feel the energy contained within it. Okay, so that could be a prayer that would be very helpful for you to understand and heal this um, turbulent, maybe, relationship. Now, that is just one strategy here that I offered to you on how to heal and mend this relationship. You don't have to be in contact with this person to do Ho'oponopono, but for some of you, maybe the best strategy is to have a sit down, honest to goodness talk with them or send them a handwritten letter um, or call, talk to them on the phone even and really it's not even that you have to mend this relationship. It's really about healing it and letting it go. Okay. So that's what I'm hearing from your higher self. Now let's get into the tarot. All right. Let's see what other details, what other information your higher self can share with us about what you need to know right now. So first out, you have Daughter of Cups. Then you have the Nine of Coins. The Father of Pentacles. And the Eight of Wands. Wow, very, very interesting here. Now what I'm really seeing um, right out the bat is this rainbow. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. Okay, and um, what I'm really called to share from spirit and your higher self is really this understanding that everybody has a purpose and a role to play in life. 
everything has a reason. Every person, being, event has its place in reality, in this experience that you're having, okay? And sometimes the way that we learn very important and valuable lessons is through challenging and complicated circumstances particularly in relationships. So it's once we respect everybody's role and part that they play in our lives, that's when we can start to take that higher perspective and understand why things have happened for us rather than to us. And the healing and the releasing can happen then. And the attracting that will happen as a result for the things you actually want will be so much easier. Okay. So what I'm getting here is definitely pulling in that wisdom and that patience and that kindness here with the father of pentacles. The father of pentacles is also an excellent teacher. They have a lot of knowledge to share with you, a lot of wisdom and insight. And that is what's being called for here is to take again that higher perspective and not function from the mindset and the viewpoint of ego and like how were you hurt how were you wronged it's more about understanding why this person did what they did and that really it's more on them than on you okay and here with the daughter of cups this is suggesting again the beginning of this emotional healing okay you're just this little duckling growing and maturing in regards to this um, connection here that has been challenging or difficult and you're going to grow and bloom and blossom into a brilliant swan okay once you allow this healing to take place once you begin to understand the 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 roles each person played in this dynamic okay and again with this nine of pentacles it's really speaking to the abundance and the joy and the stability that will come into your life once you heal this connection okay because remember what i was saying earlier how you might be wanting to attract this but you carry this anger vibration within you because of this energetic core this energetic connection it's about cleansing that so that you have stronger footing stronger magnetism towards the things that you want okay um, more stable energy versus this sort of distorted energy that um is is a mix between energies working in your favor and energies working against you okay so you want to be more in flow you want more of your energy working for you for your benefits okay and I mean, honestly, you can see these like beautiful large feathers that are going to come when you um, blossom into this brilliant swan that has a better understanding of their emotions. And it's going to really um, help you lock in and create this kind of life that you want. And um, what I'm getting here with the eight of wands is... This healing process doesn't have to take a long time. It will only take as long as you make it, okay? Some people can let things go just like that. They can forgive quite easily and so and move forward. And so it's really up to you. Like, how fast do you want this process to occur for you? How fast do you want this freedom, okay? And it's about making that choice. Here we have reflection as another message a final message from your higher self see all aspects of yourself through the reflection of the one who mirrors your higher self so one thing that i'm called to share with you and this may be a bit of a challenge for some people to really take in but do your best is you attracted this challenging person this challenging situation into your life it takes two to tango okay it you have to have two people two entities to have conflict all right so you played your part in this as well you may not be the cause of it but you are part of the reason why it's still there why it still exists all right so Take a moment to reflect on what part you played. Was there a way you hurt this person also? 
And that's the part that you're going to have to come to terms with. That's the part that also is going to be needing healing. So, wow. Oh my gosh. Some very, very powerful messages from your higher self. But if you do this work, the rewards will be astounding. I promise you that. Thank you so much for tuning into your reading today, Star Fam. Make sure to like and comment down below what you are calling in from your reading today so you can begin the manifestation pathway to make it a reality. And feel free to share this video with others and subscribe to this channel. Now, I'd like to extend a very special invitation for those of you that are looking to align with your purpose and learn how to achieve your goals. In the description box down below, you will see a link to book an energy alignment session with me where we will together create that roadmap for success. Create that roadmap for you to align with your purpose and achieve your goals. So I look forward to connecting with you and until next time, sending you all so much love and cosmic hugs. Bye.